Hello everyone and welcome to the shop. Today on the bench we have a Makuni carburetor off of an ATV. And this is off a buddy of mine's machine. It worked okay in the low to mid range, idled fine, but once you got up to the higher RPM and higher throttle settings it bogged right down, spit and sputter. Didn't work very good at all. So, my best guess of what is wrong is a blockage in the main jet just because the low to mid range fuel system is working fine. So we're going to take a look at it and see if my suspicions are correct. Now as you can see this thing is pretty filthy. I'm going to have to completely disassemble it and clean it in my ultrasonic cleaner. And the first step is just going to be disassembly. Starting the disassembly here, first thing I'm going to remove is this here which is the idle adjustment cable. It just screws into the housing here and has a little extension for easier access. The next area of attack here is removing the bowl. And this is just held on by four screws. A little trick I like to use on Phillips screw heads is use my pick to pick out any dirt that's in them just to help me from stripping the head out. And the moment of truth. Ah, it actually looks reasonably clean inside. Uh, scratch that. I see it looks like to be some sand in the bottom. Anyway, so if we look in the bottom here, this is the business end. This small jet here is your pilot jet, and this is what controls your fuel flow at idle. This is commonly the one that will end up getting clogged up just because it's an extremely small hole. So you can actually get just like varnish from old fuel will build up in it and stop the flow. And the main jet is in here, right in the middle. And you can see here there's a little cup around the jet. That is just to uh, control the sloshing around in the carburetor. To make sure that it has a constant flow in the bottom of the pickup. Actually, I can see clear as day there is a little pebble of sand right in the center of the jet. So that's exactly what we have going on right there. I'm also going to pull the other jets. I have it apart so we might as well clean the whole thing. Now I'm going to disassemble the top side of the carburetor. So this here is my ultrasonic cleaner. It's nothing fancy. I just got it off eBay a few years ago for something like $80. It has a heating element in it and holds about two and a half liters. So normally for carburetors what I like to use is simple green at a ratio at about six to eight parts water to one part cleaner. I happen to not have simple grain today, so I'm just going to use a general degreaser. And fill the rest with water. So unfortunately, this ultrasonic cleaner is a little bit small for this part. So in order to get around, what I'll have to do is put the machine on for a little while and then rotate the part just to make sure that I've gotten all sides of it. So I'm just going to start it now. First I'm going to put the heating element on and on. Here we go. Brr. It's freezing in here. While we wait for our carburetor to get clean, how about we get some heat going in here? It is quite cool here in Nova Scotia today. We actually just received our first snowfall yesterday.
Wow, that looks quite a bit cleaner. As you can see, the water is looking quite dirty now, so I'm going to change the water and do another cycle just as clean water to make sure that there aren't any particles left on the carb. After that, I'm going to spray it off with alcohol and dry it just to make sure that there isn't any residue, and then it'll be time to assemble. Okay, we are back. And as you can tell, this car is looking quite a bit cleaner than it was when you last saw it. Fresh out of the bath. And I have all of our other parts cleaned up as well. So now we are ready for the reassembly. Okay, I'm going to start with uh, the enrichment side of it, which consists of this needle on a diaphragm, spring, and the back cover. This needle works along with that needle seat down at the bottom to provide you your mid-range fuel. Now for assembly of the bottom end. I like to use a bit of this white motor assembly lubricant. It's just a white petroleum grease. I like to use this just on the O-rings. If any of this white lubricant happened to contact gasoline in the fuel circuit, it would just be dissolved, so it's a non-issue. And the pilot jet works with the air fuel mixture needle, which is actually underneath this little brass cover. For emissions regulations, they have put a cover on it so you can't actually turn it, you can't make the adjustments unless you actually pull this cover off. Looks like you could fit a pick or something in there to pry it off if need be. And I am now ready to install the needle valve. One thing, uh, on a lot of the carburetors there's actually a small screen right on the inlet because this is the first thing that the fuel passes through on the way into the bowl. And that's kind of a last chance filter in case the fuel filter doesn't pick up any particles. In fact, if it had one of those screens, this probably wouldn't have even got plugged up. But I noticed that there is not a screen on this model. Now generally the issues that they have with these are either the O-rings leaking or the needle themselves. And uh, these are the latest needles and they actually have a rubber tip on them and they seem to have pretty good luck with them. And an interesting note about these floats is you aren't supposed to put them in the ultrasonic cleaner because I've actually heard that the cleaning action can break through the seams and you can actually end up with your liquid cleaning detergent inside the float and at that point you'd have to buy a new float because there's no way that you'd be able to get your cleaning detergent back out. Now if I had the proper instruction manual for this, I can set the float height. But I really have no idea because I have no documentation on it. So we're just going to trust that the folks at the Mikuni factory in Japan got it right. Alright, time for the bowl to go on. Now it's just the one rubber gasket on this guy. and four screws fasten it down. So with this year's screw, there's two things. Other people don't touch it, and at the end of the season, they put their machine away, dirty old fuel sitting in the bowl, and the varnish gums up the carb. By the time the next spring comes around, you go to start it. So, drain your bowl. The other thing, People feel like they need to absolutely grunt on this screw as hard as they can. It's just a taper screw. It does not need to be tight in order to keep the fuel from coming out. So don't tighten it and strip the head out. And that is all folks. 
this old Yamaha is going to purr like a kitten once again. Please comment and let me know if you enjoyed this video. Any input is good input. Thank you for watching.